tree shrub windbreaks can be designed for a variety of purposes, including wildlife habitat, snow control, wind protection for homes, to reduce erosion from crop fields, and to provide diversity and beauty to the landscape. They may even generate income from tree or shrub products. Base the design of your windbreak primarily on its purpose while considering site conditions. In Windbreak Design Part 1, we cover two aspects of windbreak design, density and location. In this program, we'll cover two more aspects of windbreak design to think about while planning a windbreak. A third aspect of windbreak design is composition. The number of rows in a windbreak depends on its purpose and the available space. Most windbreaks have at least two rows of trees or shrubs. Typical windbreak components include dense conifers to reduce wind velocity, tall broadleaf or coniferous trees to extend the area of protection, and low-growing, dense trees or shrubs to influence snow deposition, provide wildlife habitat, and add aesthetic value. For a farmstead windbreak, consider planting four to ten rows with two to four rows of dense conifers. For a livestock windbreak, plant four to ten rows with three to six rows of dense conifers. For a field windbreak, plant one to two rows with up to one of the rows dense conifers. For a living snow fence, plant two to four rows with one half to all of the rows dense conifers. If the surrounding landscape is extremely unobstructed, you'll need more trees in the windbreak to influence wind speed and snow deposition. A multiple row windbreak should have windward rows of dense conifer trees or shrubs, interior rows of tall broadleaf trees, and leeward rows of shrubs or conifers. Plant a diversity of species to reduce the risk of insect, disease, or environmental problems. The diversity will provide excellent wildlife habitat as well. The fourth design aspect we'll cover is spacing. An important design principle for windbreaks is that individual trees and shrubs function as a unit. Generally, the wider the initial tree spacing between the trees, the longer the effective life of the windbreak. To get windbreak protection sooner, use close spacing. Unfortunately, close spacing will reduce the longevity of the windbreak but periodic thinning of crowded trees, or sometimes even whole rows, can extend the effective life of the windbreak. On the other hand, very large spacings, where branches of individual trees and shrubs never intersect, may produce beautiful specimen trees, but will never function as a fully effective windbreak. When you're planting seedlings, it's hard to imagine how much they will grow in even 10 years. Space the rows wide enough apart so that there will be enough room for the largest piece of equipment you'll need to maintain the windbreak. Depending on the species of trees or shrubs and the location in the windbreak, spacing between plants in a row may range from 6 to 20 feet for trees and 4 to 6 feet for shrubs. Spacing between rows may be 12 to 25 feet between rows of trees and 8 to 10 feet between rows of shrubs. The species of trees or shrubs to plant depends on the soil type, precipitation, hardiness zone, and your personal preference. Contact your local Natural Resources District, Natural Resources Conservation Service, Nebraska Forest Service, or Extension Office to learn of trees and shrubs that grow well in specific soil types in your area, as well as proper spacing. I'm Jan Hingstrom with UNL Extension, and thanks to Dennis Adams of the Nebraska Forest Service and Jay Seaton, Lower Platte South Natural Resources District, for information and photos.